friends, welcome back to Food Prep Guide. It is an absolutely gorgeous day today and I need some sun. Oh, I need some sun so bad. So I thought it would be a good time to come outside and show y'all one way to start seeds um, that doesn't involve a greenhouse or you don't have to have like an indoor grow set up. This is how I've been starting my seeds for about four or five years now. And I just, I love it. I don't think I'll ever do it any other way. We'll see, but um, it's a technique called winter sowing and you just do it in milk jugs. So I wanted to show you my setup and then show you how to prep a milk jug for winter sowing. If you would like help planning a productive garden, scroll down to the description box of this video and click this link for a free garden printable. We calculated quantities for a year's supply of the most common garden vegetables and organized them into a neat chart to help you plan. We'll send it straight to your inbox. If you're new here, we invite you to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming tutorials on gardening and food preservation, food storage, and more. Okay, there is all of my milk jugs outside. Whoops, yeah, there we go. Okay, so each jug has approximately six seeds in them, but there are plenty of plants that can be broadcasted, meaning you can just sprinkle the seeds all across the surface. And so for those, I mean, those could have dozens and dozens and dozens of seeds in them. Um, so this represents a lot of seedlings in, right here in this milk jug section. I'm gonna show you through and just kind of give you a brief kind of rundown of what we're growing. If y'all have seen our seed chat video, you already know what we're growing this year, so I'm not going to go too in depth, but we have several varieties of tomatoes. And I wanted to show you a couple of things that have been out here. Some of these jugs have only been out for about a week, but some of them have been out for about three weeks now and have already sprouted. So I wanted to give you a peek inside the jug so you can see that. I believe the cabbage has sprouted. Here's some cabbage. Okay, let me try to get you inside the milk jug so you can see the sprouts. Don't know if you can see anything yet. Can't see anything through the lens. Oh, there we go. There's one. There we go. Focus. I don't know if the camera. There we go. Okay, camera's focused. Good. So as you can see, let's see one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see about six uh, seedlings in there. I believe the kale has sprouted as well. Let's kind of look over here at the kale and see. Let's see. Which ones have sprouted? Hmm. I know there's been more. Oh, I think the tatsoi. Yeah, the tatsoi sprouted real good already. I'll try to get the camera to focus in there. There we go. Oops. Okay, so you can see there's a good bit of tatsoi. So I usually, you can see some of the sprouts have two right there next to each other. I try to put two seeds into each hole just as a backup if the seeds don't have a 100% germination rate. Um, but most of the seeds that I sprout from Baker Creek, which the tatsoi is from Baker Creek, um, it's 100% germination rate. So I really could get by with not doing it, but may as well go ahead and do it and not worry about not having enough to fill up uh, my grow bed. Here's some more cabbage that has sprouted. I love coming out here and peeking in my jugs. It is so fun. It's not wanting to, not wanting to focus. Oh well. So we have all sorts of things. The, my entire garden is represented in these jugs right here. And it's not taking up any space in my house. I don't have a greenhouse, so that's just not even an option. Um, but this is just, I absolutely love this winter sowing method. Okay, so you can see I have sticks going through the handlebars and that is wind protection. Uh, we get some high winds here every now and then and also critters. My cats like to nuzzle up against these milk jugs sometimes. Um, so just having a stick go through several jugs just keeps them very stable. I can't, if I were to come over here and, um, you know, wiggle the jugs, they're not going to completely fall over because they have these sticks all the way through um, the handle. So that's just one tip. Okay, let me get the camera set up and I'm gonna show you how to prep a milk jug to do this winter sowing method. Okay, so to prep a milk jug, you obviously need a milk jug. You will need a knife, scissors, or an X-Acto knife. Something to puncture holes into the bottom. I always use a drill, but people, I've seen people use a soldering iron before. Um, you could just use a scissors, anything to poke some holes. Some scissors and some duct tape, and of course your seed and your soil. So, 
first steps is drainage holes in the bottom of the milk jug. Here is the about the size that I'm doing, the drain holes. You don't want them to be so itty bitty that it takes the water too long to escape. Um, you don't want your seeds molding inside of the container, but you also don't want them so big that the soil dries out too fast and you're having to come out here and water these jugs every other day. If you, I will generally, like I said, I use this part and I'm going to show you how many holes I do. And doing it this way, I think last year I only watered the jugs maybe twice. And that's because rainfall took care of it, but also just the system, the jug system creates this little miniature greenhouse where the condensation goes onto the top of the jug and then drops back down onto the, the seed and the soil. So it's just not really needing to water all that often. But you definitely don't want your holes to be too big or else you're gonna lose that benefit. Um, so you know how a milk jug is kind of sectioned off into four quadrants. So I always do a hole in the center of each quadrant and then I go ahead and do one here and one here in that indentation that runs along the bottom of most milk jugs for a total of six holes and that seems to have worked well for me over the years. Goodness, the last one didn't want to go through. Okay, my milk jug got a little wonky but I'll be able to pop that out in just a minute. So drain holes are done. Next step is to cut cut the jug open but not all the way open. So we want to basically create a hinge right here and as far as the depth of the soil we want at least about three inches of soil possibly four inches somewhere right along there. I actually usually go by the handle and I do just below the handle is where I usually cut. I hate using exacto knives but that's the only thing that seems to get the job done. Looks like some roosters are fighting. Okay, they stopped. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start right next to the handle and go around. Okay, and I'm gonna go all the way around until we create this little hinge right here at the handlebar of the milk jug. Let me pop my jug back open the way it's supposed to be. Okay, next step is soil, and I forgot soil. Let me go get some. Okay, got my soil right down here. So now I'm just going to fill up the soil up to just below our cut line. You can use, you want to use potting soil or raised bed soil, not seed starting mix like you typically would when you're starting seeds. And that's because seed starting mix doesn't have the nutrients that we need to sustain the plant's life for as long as we need it to. This is one thing that's different about traditional seed starting methods. Is with traditional seed starting methods, you are constantly up potting them or repotting them into larger pots as they grow. And with the winter sowing method, they stay here in this milk jug all the way until it's time to transplant into the ground. So in that way, it's a little bit less labor intensive, or definitely time, not as much of a time commitment using this winter sowing method. Do a little bit more than that. So the next step is to go ahead and wet your soil really well. You could also do this after putting your seeds in the ground and just spritz the top uh, layer of the soil with a water bottle. I like to have my soil um, really well, like very damp, not so soaked that it's leaking water out of the milk jug holes, um, but just very damp. There's a chicken about to, get in, about to get in here. Let me go shut the garden gate. No, you know you can't be in here. <laughs> okay <laughs> I've got some um, I have my garlic bed planted I've got I think 50 or 60 heads of garlic and those chickens will come in here and just tear that up so I got to make sure they don't get in here and I left the door open okay so at this point I would normally be watering my soil enough to be very very damp and actually I normally get a container of soil I go ahead and get that whole container of soil wet and then start loading my milk jugs because usually when I'm doing this, 
I'm sitting it down and loading up 30 to 40 milk jugs at a time. But this soil that I have here, I know you can't see it, but it's a container bag that was left over from last season. It's been outside and it rained recently, so this soil is already nice and wet, so I'm not going to worry about spraying it down, but just know you want your soil nice and damp. Now you need to plant your seeds. Um, so for this one, I'm doing salad burnet. Let me put it this down here so that bag doesn't flow away. Flow away, fly away. I'm doing salad burnet. It is an herb, kind of, kind of more like a green, but it tastes, has a taste like cucumbers. And it's really, really good in salads. I haven't only eaten it fresh on like salads and such, um, sauces like a pico de gallo, really good in that too. Um, but this year I want to try and freeze dry it. I didn't dehydrate it last year because I kind of knew just from my experience with dehydrating that this type of herb was probably going to lose a lot of its flavor dehydrated. But I think freeze dried might preserve that flavor and it has that strong cucumber flavor which you use in a, which you lose in a regular dehydrator. So I'm going to try to grow a decent amount of it this year beyond what I would need for fresh eating like I've done in years past try to preserve it and we'll see. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and do seven holes. I'm just going to take my finger and just poke little holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is, these are 2022 seeds, I think. Yes, these are 2022 seeds, so I am definitely going to put two seeds per hole. Since they are older seeds, I might not get a 100% germination rate. But um, you can certainly do one seed per hole if you know your seeds are fresh and you know that you are have gotten them from a company that has a good, successful germination rate. These are pokey, kind of like beet seeds are. Pokey seeds. Okay. Another note about winter sowing is that you don't plant them deep like you would in traditional seed sowing or if you were to direct sow in the ground. It doesn't matter what seed you're planting, it always just gets planted at just below surface level. So when I poked my fingers down in the hole, I didn't poke it down far at all. Oops, get out of there, roly poly. Roly polies absolutely will eat your seedlings when they're young before they're big and grown. They don't really bother full grown plants as much, but seedlings, they absolutely do. Don't believe those articles online that tell you they don't. They will. I've lost several jugs to roly polies over the years. But anyway, okay, so seeds are planted. I have covered them and the soil is already wet, so I don't even need to spritz them. If your soil is dry, go ahead and give them a good spritz with the water bottle. And now it's just time to seal the jug. Uh, you do want to label your jug too. I usually label in two places, one right up here on the outside with the Sharpie, um, but sometimes the sun can kind of uh, make that fade over time. So I usually put some sort of plant marker or something inside the jug itself with the name on it. Um, I forgot to bring out a Sharpie, but this is going to be the only jug that's not labeled. All of my 40 plus jugs are labeled. So when I see this guy that's not labeled, I will know that it is salad burnet. And if I forget, I can always come back and watch my own video <laughs> to remind me what it is. Okay, so now we just need to tape it shut. Some people use painter's tape. I've always used duct tape. You use what you have and what you think will work good. We just need to seal up this milk jug. So I'm going to make the tape Place the tape to where half of the tape is above the jug and half of the tape is below the jug. And just go around. I'm just pressing down to seal up any little gaps or bubbles that formed. The whole reason we seal them, I mean, for security reasons, obviously, but 
we don't want any airflow other than the airflow right here getting into the jug because it'll dry out your soil too fast. There it is, and this jug is done. It's just going to set out on the ground. I'm going to put um, a stick through it along with one of these sticks. Find one that has some has some um, little stick room left over and stick that through here just for, to secure it. But we leave the top off and rain will be able to get in and keep them nice and moist. If the soil, if I look in there and the soil is not very moist looking, I'll go ahead and water. But when it comes to all of those details, in case you don't know, we have a sprout to supper course where we basically teach you every step of the seed to table process. And we basically start with this winter sowing because that's the method that is taught in the course and um, how to keep them watered, keep pests out, how to transplant when it comes time, what to do if your plants go out above the top level, what to do if, it, if a heavy freeze is coming your way and all that stuff. Um, but the rest of the course just takes you through the seed starting, the gardening, the growing, the harvesting, the preserving, and then using those foods from your garden in your pantry, in your meal planning, um, and all of that. So if you are interested, I will leave a link to that Sprout to Supper course in the description box below. I hope this was helpful to y'all. I absolutely love the winter sowing method. It is fantastic, it is frugal, and it doesn't take up space in my already small house, which I absolutely appreciate. We'll see y'all next time. Bye.